All right, everybody. I'm leaning over weird because there's some cords here, but thanks for coming in to all the people in the room here. Today, we're happy to have Emily from Utah. Emily is a professional turner. She turns all day, every day, and is a lot of fun. She's going to be turning baby rattles. She's turned a number of giant symposiums and events, so she's very, uh, we're very lucky to have her here. Um, she likes long, no, I don't know what else. She is married, <laughs> uh, happily. But we are very happy to have you. Thanks for coming, Emily. Everybody, let's give a round of applause. And I'm gonna let you take over. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, as Chad said, I'm Emily Ford. I'm out of Utah. I'm just north of Salt Lake. I teach wood turning 101, um, but it's lots of fun. I've been turning for, what year is this? I have been turning for nine years as of this year. I love it. And I got into turning, not that anybody cares, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, because it's part of my demo, you get to hear the story. Um, my husband at the time, we are no longer married, we are very happily divorced from one another, um, was a wood turner and he'd go out to the, sh the garage and be gone for hours, leaving me alone with the children. Like, what is taking you so long? He'd come in with this tiny little box. I'm like, that took you six hours? There's no way, there's no way. And come to find out, I was correct. <laughs> um, I've been turning since right before my youngest was born. He'll be nine this year. And I wanted a baby rattle. I asked my husband for a baby rattle. Well, I don't have the right tool to do that. And I said, well, fine, I'll buy the tool. How much is it? $45. I'm like, well, the rattle I want is $45. So if I buy the tool, then you can make me all the rattles I want. And then I bought the tool, and he wouldn't do it. Well, I don't know how to use that. I'll figure it out, but I want to do this other thing first, because he was more, <laughs> fine, show me how to do it. And that was the demise of our relationship because I figured it out and got better than him. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I really appreciate, that's, of the, all the horrible things, we, like I said, we're very happily divorced. He gave me two really invaluable things. I got introduced to wood turning, where I've met some of my favorite people in the whole wide world, and we have a very cute, almost nine-year-old, <laughs> so, that we share fairly well. Um, but, I love turning, as I said, I went to the Utah Symposium, after I'd been turning for about four months, and I was so good. I was like, I'm so proud of this. I got to use symposium. I'm like, absolutely not. We are not putting this in the instant gallery. We are, I am gonna hide in the back of the room. I'm not talking to anybody. I sat down at one of the lunch tables and sat for the whole lunch period, and everybody had gone out to lunch, and this gentleman was sitting there, old guy, blonde, white hair. I know I just described most of the wood turners in the world. <laughs> sat and talked to him, and I introduced myself, he said, yeah, I'm rich, we're great. Cute, cutest English accent I've ever heard. I spent lunch with Richard Raffin, wonderful man, very helpful, never told me who he was, he didn't have on his name tag, and I'm like, oh, I've gotta to get to the next demo because I was told that if I don't get there early, I won't get a seat, he's like, oh, you're fine, he's always running late. He walked in after me, great guy, he's a great guy. I love the wood turning community because we're always willing to help and there's no secrets. And if you're a wood turner with secrets, you're not a very nice wood turner. <laughs> because wood turners are willing to help, they want to share what we're doing. And that's what I like to do. I've come up with this baby rattle design that I've used for years and people are like, no, I don't want to show you how to do that because it's a secret. No, I want everybody to do it. And when you do it, tag me on Instagram so I can see it, please. But I wanted to show you a couple things. Before we get started, I will start turning in just a moment. As, I, as Chad mentioned, I'm down visiting. My son is at Barrett Jackson. My grandmother is here with me today. This is my very first bowl. Without her, I would not be, po her, I would not be possible, so we're very grateful. <laughs> Thank you, Grandma. This is my very first bowl ever. Um, my helper drilled through the bottom, so we saved it. And it's funny, you feel it when I pass it around. You'll see that there's enough room in the bottom that I shouldn't have a, a funnel. Um, but we fi fixed it. I don't do this anymore. And I went from this to this. And this is what she keeps all of her stuff in, on her table. Um, and there's some tops and rattles in here I'm gonna pass around. But if you start like this, you can't end up like this and do everything in between. What I teach are beads and coves. If you can turn a bead in a cove, 
You can turn anything, anything. Everything with turning is either a bead or a cove. Everything, even hollow forms. Still trying to figure out how I'm going to convince that people that it's beads and coves, but I'm getting there someday. So I'm going to pass this around, and I'm going to get started for real. We're actually going to start turning. <laughs> we are going to start. Everybody know the parts of a lathe, I hope. Headstock, tailstock, chuck. I have a step center in here. Nice for me. I do want to change this out because I am picky. I prefer a cup center for my spindle work. I don't like the cone center because, again, I'm picky. And we'll just have to automatically eject it. Does! I turn on a VL300 at home. Nice. It was very well trained. It was Kirk DeHears. I had to suck up for a lot of years before I convinced him that he needed a new paint job and I should get his old one. It lives at my house. I love it. It's one of my favorite things I own. Um, and I started with a Delta Midi. You can turn anything. I've got this beautiful lathe with a 24 inch swing and it's wonderful and I turn tops and baby rattles. <laughs> yeah, it works. But I turn so much that I change my bearings. I change my bearings every year and the other turners are like, there's no possible way. I turn at full speed for probably eight hours a day every day. And it's different. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Lots of fun. If there's any questions, feel free. To Please feel free to ask. I probably won't know the answer, but I'll pretend. Uh, we are going to start with a top today because tops and rattles go together, right? If you're going to give a, if you're, somebody's got a new baby and they have older children, take tops when you take a rattle. That way, the little, the big kids still get a present too. Ha ha ha! See. And these are fun. They're quick. They're easy. Um, and please forgive me for any of my follies today. I am used to a different machine. I'm going to get to know this one fairly well, fairly quickly. And it doesn't matter what you're turning on as long as it spins. We can get so much done. So, much pe so many people are asked, what should I use? What should I use? The answer to that, truthfully, is whatever you can afford. I started with Harbor Freight. I still use several of the Harbor Freight tools. They work. They get the job done. Learn how to sharpen, and you'll be good to go. And again, holler anytime you need anything. Yes. Any questions? <laughs> um, I'm going to talk to somebody about this. No, we're going to start at standard tool rest height, and we are going to start with a spindle roughing gouge. I prefer the one and a quarter. I think this is a one inch. I like the one and a quarter that I have at home. These are the record tools that they sell. They happen to sell here at Turner's Warehouse, ah, in case you want to know. These work great. Um, I think you've got this at a 40, maybe. Um, mine at home, I, I grind to a 45. It works. We are going to start with the ABCs of wood turning, which are anchor, bevel, cut. And we can tell who's in my club back at home. <laughs> ABCs of wood turning, anchor, bevel, cut. cut. We are going to anchor to the, our tool to the tool rest. We're going to raise our handle until we get that first little cut. We're going to find that bevel. And then we're going to make a cut. And we're going to sp speed this lathe up, maybe. And we're going to tell me how to do that, right? We're on the low setting. I'm sorry, we've got to change belts because I am a spindle turner, not a bowl turner. That's a lie, I turn lots of bowls. But um, I failed to mention that I needed to be on the high speeds. I'm certain I could probably figure this out, but I'm gonna let Chad do it because it's his baby, not mine. If you uh, <laughs> wanna like, you know, fill the time with some humor or something. <laughs> I'll dance, or sing and dance. <laughs> Turning is not only about what you can do with your hands, where the tool is, it's where your body is. We're going to move one way, and then we're going to shift our body weight onto our other foot. We're going to start, we're going to shift to our right, then we're going to shift back to our left. If we can go like this, remember those high school dances where you swayed? <laughs> now we're going to sway and just turn just a little bit. That's it. Now we can all turn captive rings. I always tell everybody, we're going to learn how to dance. That's what we're doing. That, we're all going to be able to turn captive rings. That'll be more important in just a minute. <laughs> well, that was fun. 
Oh, he's got to reset it, right? Push it, pop it up, hit start. Whee! It works! I'm so happy. I'm not going to jump, drop everything. I usually have a pile of shavings, so if my tools fall, I still have to resharpen, but at least I'm not going to kill them. Okay, we're going to turn up our lathe speed. Apparently, this lathe is not a spindle lathe. It likes to do bowls. I can tell that it likes to do bowls. I'm going to keep this up at the top. I'm not going to tighten this right here on my tailstock because I don't need to. I like to recenter and tighten as I go because this will move. And if I tight right here, if I set my tailstock, if I get loose, which it, it will, even if you're tight, I'm not going to know until something goes, whoo! Uh, oops. So we're good. Okay, anchor bevel cut. We're, we're there, right? We understand those concepts. ABCs, anchor bevel cut. Sweet. So we're going to stand out of the line of fire. I'm going to come over here. Again, anchor to the tool rest. We're going to hit that heel of that tool. We're going to raise up until we get it, find our cut, and then we're going to slide across the tool rest. And all we're going to do, back and forth, back and forth, we're going to just clean that up until we're nice and round. And we can sneak up on it and just back our way through or we can slide across. Just taking it off, we don't have to be super aggressive. This is not erased today. When it is erased, we'll get there. We'll know. But what I really like to say about turning is if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. And my, my joke is, if I'm not turning, I'm not having fun, and I'm, I'm not playing that game. I don't like to do all, all, all the fiddly stuff I am not, I am not a pen turner. I try, I try. But there's so much fiddle work that goes in with pens. You have to drill them out and do all that stuff. And turning's only this much of pen turning. Pen turning is great and pen turners are amazing. I am not one of them. I started with pens. I started with pens. So, do we all know how to see if we're clean? If we bounce, we've got a flat spot. And there's a little flat spot there, we can hear it. But We'll go, do it again. We're going to set a tenon on this, and I'm going to show you a trick. At home, I use a big one and a quarter one of these, and I just flip it over on its side, drop it down. We're going to pull up straight. If it's ground correctly, this works really well. And this one is not ground the way I love it, and that's okay. Nobody's in trouble. We're going to take our spindle gouge, come in from the side, and just set that tenon and then pull back straight so we have a nice flat edge for that shoulder to knock up against. And because I'm not using the check I'm used to at home, I'm going to just eyeball it to see if I'll fit in there and we're going to cross our fingers. And if not, we'll see how to do this all over again. How's that? I am very anti-measuring. There's a reason I'm not a carpenter. But measuring takes time and I don't want to do it. Not if I can eyeball it just right. Measure none. Measure none. Shh. I bake all the time. I, but I do bread. And that you just have to get in the general vicinity. Correct? So I'm going to do that again with these other blanks that, since they're sitting here and I've already got the stuff all out. Now that I've taken it apart because my brain just doesn't work and my medicine hasn't kicked in yet this morning. Okay. We've got some beautiful maple right here and some beautiful ambrosia maple. Isn't that pretty? Or I don't know which. I'm used to having a, a, a monitor right here so I can see where I'm looking. So if I'm not looking at you, I'm sorry. You're doing great. <laughs> I will chill out in about 10 more minutes. But in the interim, you get the little, little, little Emily for just about 10 minutes. I usually chill out. Once the drugs kick in, Once the drugs kick in I'm <sighs> sedated. No, that's not how they work. I wish, that, I wish it was. Don't we all? No, I have and was diagnosed with ADHD as I, a grown-up, so that was fun. I'm like, you, I asked my mother one day, you didn't think to maybe tell me? And she's like, well, you weren't as bad as your brother, so I didn't think it was a problem. I said, how about the 15 years it took for me to get my degree? Lots of people go to school for 15 years. We call them doctors. Unfortunately, that wasn't me. <coughs> okay, I'm learning the, 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 the controls over here. They're great. This is kind of a fun lathe. You can move the box if you want to 
not in the control box. Oh, no, it's, that's where I keep mine. Oh. I keep it right here. I smack it because I'm Anyway, I've also got one right here too, so we're good. We're going to hit start. Ta-da! Always turn your work before you turn on your lathe. Make sure you're not hitting anything. You know, safety first. We're going to turn up the lathe speed. Whee! And there's formulas and everything that you're supposed to learn when you're a turner for safety speeds. I go until I feel like that's right. Bowls, not so much. Bowls, I try to follow the pattern because you'll, you'll get through that first little bounce. With spindles, you don't generally get a bounce with spindles because you're turning square stock usually. I like, it to, I like it to be so fast that when I put my tool to it, it just glides, even if it's, not, even if it's square stock. So anchor the tool rest, pick up that heel, rotate over, and that's about the right sound that we're getting that. That's, that's about the speed I like it to be. And we're dropping our handle as we're coming up. We're raising that handle and sliding it across to get that nice clean cut. That clean, even cut. This is actually a really nice tool. Yes, sir, what's the question? What speed, are you on? What speed am I turning on? Are you not listening? <laughs> as fast as I need to. It says that I am at almost 2,600. I don't have a digital readout on my lathe. I have the old Vicmark at home. So I never know what turning speed I'm turning at. I listen to the lathe. And when it starts going, I know that I either need to kick it up or I need to regrease my bearings, one or the other. So we're just going to finish rounding this out. And the best part about roughing out is I always get a mouthful of wood. I hate black walnut. I won't demonstrate with black walnut anymore because it's so sour. And getting a mouthful of black walnut is just, you're like, oh, I need something to wash my mouth out with. But this is just fun. If you're not having fun while you're turning, walk away. You gotta have fun while you're doing this. You gotta have fun with it. You gotta enjoy what you're doing. And I'm just raising my handle up as I turn around and I might've just cut that too small. That's okay. I have more wood. It's fine. You clean that up. That's as hard as this is, guys. And at home, when I'm in production mode, all I'll do, I've got a little bit of a flat spot, and that's okay, I just wanted to rough it out. This is called roughing it out. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then you get the argument, well, it should be perfect, because this is what you practice. You should be practicing perfect cuts. Not in my shop. We do the perfect cuts as we're finishing. That's our finished cuts. Roughing out, you want the gist. We're gonna get the idea of what we're doing here. It does not have to be perfect. I, and that's, <laughs> that's why I'm not the, the best um, artist because everybody's working for perfection. And I'm like, let's just get the job done. Let's get it to where we need to be and then we can fight with it. Does that sound fair? I, like I said, I don't like to measure. I'm the daughter of a general contractor. Measuring is important. I was doing a job with my dad recently and I'm like, it's three and four little dots. The, the, the <laughs> tiniest ones though. He just looked at me, go back to fifth grade. I love you too, Dad. I'm going to never get used to that. Hit the button, turn the button, hit the button. Okay, we're in. That sounds about right. You got to get that little bit of a whirl. It should be singing to you. Dad, I'm going to get you dirty. Uh-oh. Do we need to cover up your computer? Okay, just checking, just checking. I figured you knew what you were doing, but eh. I think you've done this before. Remember, don't hit your chuck. If we're listening, you heard me go tink, I hit with the back of the tool. I am really good at being a bad example because if I do it wrong, then you'll know not to do it wrong, correct? Okay, there we go. Set that tenon. Ooh, it's smooth. I love it. Okay, we're gonna stop. We're gonna flip these around. And do we wanna start, start with tops because that's what we're going to do? Good. Yeah. That's an excellent decision. I'm so glad you guys came to that decision. So tops are so fun. And I'm looking around for tools I need. I, I do the color texture tops as I passed around and I sell tons and tons of those. But I like to, I really like to do just plain tops to really feature the wood. 
And when you've got a pretty wood like the ambrosia maple, it's fun to try that out. And if I cut this tannin too small, I'm going to be super embarrassed. And it's a really good thing. <laughs> it's like I planned it. No, I, we should be good. <laughs> you should have. I should have brought mine. At home, I do have a full face shield that I tell people that I wear. Oh, good. I did make sure that where there was a doctor on site, just in case. <laughs> the trust is real in this room, folks. <laughs> it's just a spindle. You want to talk about how many times I've broken my fingers on these? They're, they are all still there. Just in case. Not worth it. OK. I have this ground to a 40 because they didn't have a 35. And this wasn't a, a traditional uh, grind this morning. I like to sweep back my wings. We're going to stop that so I can show you. Are we on overhead? Uh, yep. We can be. Sweet. I like to sweep back my wings. I even go a little bit more steep than this. But I like a swept back wing so I can get to narrow corners, or corners on a round piece of wood. I'm going to call them coral, corners, ferals, all. There's a whole new way of speaking when you pick this up. I'm still learning it, and I've been doing it for almost 10 years. I can just say corners. It's fine. So I like my wings swept back so they're out of my way so I can get into those tight little spaces that I don't want to pick up a detail gouge for. I really like to just, if I don't have to change gouges, I won't because I am lazy. I mean efficient. Efficient's what I meant. <laughs> When you are a production turner, efficiency is key. That's why production turners use skew chisels. I'm not that efficient. The real reason production turners use skew chisels is you can take a square bar stock and make a chisel out of it for next to nothing. Round bar stock is a little bit more expensive. I can afford a round bar stock. It's what I learned with when I very first started turning. Uh, my first turning instructor told me, this is the most dangerous tool in the shop, and held up a screw ch skew chisel. So I was terrified. I hated roughing out, roughing out corners. They were, it was scary. I made him rough everything out so I could then have fun and do the, the smooth turning. Yeah, I don't even care anymore. So I prefer this. It works really well. I sweep back my wings. And here's the trick with tops. We are going to follow that bevel. That's it. That is how we are going to design our top. We're going to anchor the tool rest, raise up so we're fighting a cut. We're going to just slide down that bevel. And we're going to keep our tool in contact. We're, going to lift our handle as we're going around and we're creating a bead and because I'm so far away from the chuck that's that what that little rattle is that little chatter that's okay we can turn up our lathe speed or we can just take lighter cuts which is painful for me because I am not a go slow type person we just slow down take those light little cuts or we reach over here and go a little bit faster and remember, we're, we're, we're really just lightly in that chuck. So I'm being really soft because I don't want to smack anybody, including myself, in the face. Can everybody hear me? Am I loud enough? I usually have on a mic and I got to feel really fancy. My favorite photo that I have that I send out when I'm demonstrating and stuff like that. I've got a, a, a mic that wraps around right here. I look like Garth Brooks. Ha <laughs> I've made it. I've made it. I always wanted to be Garth Brooks. He is a born entertainer. He's amazing. Someday we'll get there. So we are anchoring to the tool rest. We are going to raise that handle. We are going to rotate our handle to an uncomfortable position as we slide down. And we're going to follow that bevel all the way down until we have a point. This takes just a couple of tries. And you'll see we're getting close. We don't want a super tight point because it won't spin. We kind of want a rounded over point. This is a little too open still. We're going to take about one more cut, I hope. We'll find out in just a minute. There we go. That is fine. That's as, as pointy as it needs to be. We've got a smooth surface right here. I wouldn't even need to sand this right here as it stands right now. Can everybody see that? Aha. And notice, I was up at 5.30 yesterday morning to catch my flight, but my nails weren't done. So I made sure that I painted my nails in a festive color for everybody here. Yeah, I, it was really important to me that my nails look nice for you, you all. Also, safety features. A thing of note, 
You should not wear any jewelry while you're turning. I never take off my wedding ring. I should have on one of the ones that are silicone. I told my husband, if that takes my finger off, it's your fault. Which is fair, because he was helping with my lathe and I about took his finger off, so fair's fair. We are just removing material. We don't need any of this material anymore. And if you'll notice, this will be our next top. So we're just gonna remove material, get it out of our way, just sliding down, beads and coves, beads and coves, beads and coves. So much fun, super easy. And again, for anybody joining us online, if you have questions, shout them out. My minions over here will tell them to me and I will repeat them and hopefully answer them. And right now, I'm at about 4,000 RPMs. Like I said, I like to speed up when I'm doing my work. I get a cleaner cut and it's more efficient. It doesn't make any, as, as scary of noises is the hope. If there's any questions, please holler. Questions, comments, concerns, and kudos. I take kudos. Just remove material. And this is some beautiful wood. Usually I would show you how to texture it, texture it which I can on the next one. But when you've got pretty wood that's ambrosia maple, you're gonna let that speak for itself. For finishing on these, I throw them into a bag full of whatever oil I can find. Typically it's walrus oil, or I finish it with scratch free from Dr. Kirk's. Is there a finish that you prefer? Does Turner's Word Health have a finish? Uh, we have the Myland line and the Mahoney oil and stuff. Okay, Myland's is great, it has a grit in it, gives you a really pretty finish. The Mahoney's is great, it will uh, polymerize eventually, um, but it works really well. I, that's what I used almost, exclusive, almost exclusively for the first three years of my turning. Uh, like I said, I use a lot uh, mineral oil. I use uh, Dr. Kirk's Stratch Free because I know a guy. Um, <laughs> I know a guy. But um, finish these with anything you want. Make sure that it's food safe. If you're not willing to put it into your mouth as it stands, wet, don't give it to your kids. That's as much of the ins and outs that I'm going to give you. If you're not willing to put that in your mouth, before it's dry, don't give it to little kids. And the reason I know that is I am a mom, and here's my authority on that. I have six kids. That's a lot. That's half a dozen. There's six kids at my house that I left with my husband. If you're not willing to give it to them, don't put it on your work. We're just doing that lift, twist, and rotate. Right now, what we're doing is we're sliding down, we're following that bevel edge, letting the tool do the work, the wood's coming to the tool, and you'll notice that my flute is not open, I am closed. This is open, this is closed. When we are open, we are inviting a catch, because our wings are out, and if there's any wood on either side, we'll go and then we throw things off the lathe and say bad words, and I can't say bad words because my grandmother's here, and she'll tell my father, and then I'll be grounded, and being grounded at the age I am just isn't fun. So all we're doing, or right now we're just cutting co a, a big cove. We cut a bead, now we're cutting a cove into a bead, and we'll part it off. And I promise it does not really take this long to turn a top, everybody. When you're talking, it takes five times as long, I swear. Ambrosia maple, it's wonderful. It's, I always joke that ambrosia maple smells like dead mice. Yes, sir. Speaking of how long it takes, tell us about the, uh, the two-top challenge. Okay, there's a two-top challenge on Instagram and everywhere else. That, you turn a top, and at the time, and you set it up to spin, and you have until it stops spinning to turn the next top. That's not hard, it's really easy to do if you're in your own shop at home. I did it in front of my boss one day. It didn't work. But only because he was standing there. Okay, here's a fun thing with this. We could put a captive ring on this if we felt so compelled. Do we feel so compelled? Fine. Gosh. Me and my big mouth. I'm going to elongate the spindle just a touch then. I mean, since you said so. I mean, might as well, right? Okay, I think I might have lied. 
No, we're good. We've got the little one. Ha ha. And here's where I'm going to hawk the wares. These will be available here at Turner's Warehouse eventually. There is a sign-up sheet. And you can shoot an email. They're not in stock yet, but they will be. Um, these are the Benjamin Best's um, captive ring tools. This is the style of captive ring tool I use. There's another brand out there that has a movable head that I'm not going to say their name. Do not buy the one with the movable head. It is a lesson in frustration. These ones work really well. Benjamin Best work. I'm going to show you how to sharpen these because it's really, really hard and you really just have to finesse it. You take a diamond hone, just like this. You put it right here. Where am I, where am I looking? Yep, put it right here. Flat on there. Follow that angle. Did we see how hard that was? And I'll do it again on the other side just to make sure that you understand. Okay, that was really hard, right? Super hard. Okay, if you need, if you need to ask questions, please message me on Instagram. I'm She Turns Wood. Now pay attention. I'm only going to show you one more time. Otherwise, I'm going to start charging for it. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's as easy as that. I keep a diamond card in my back pocket 90% of the time. I have like eight smocks in my shop. There's a diamond card in both of all of them. In both of, them, in both of the eight. <laughs> Y'all, I got to sleep with my little boy last night. He was on the other side of the bed. He kicks. <coughs> so sleep was not a thing last night. Back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth. We should be sharp. I don't think these have ever been sharpened, so we'll, we'll see if that works. If not, we'll, we'll figure it out. Pull out, push down, hit start. Question. Yes, sir? Question, what? What if we've them? No such thing. If you have, I know somebody you should talk to. So <laughs> since he brought that up, thank you, Brandon, I'm going to admit something. When I started turning with these, I didn't know you could sharpen them because they're a little weird. So I just bought new ones. I actually gave all the other ones away. I'm like, well, if you can figure out how to sharpen this, and their eyes would light up, all my turning friends. Oh, yeah. Nobody thought to tell me you could sharpen these because they wanted free tools. Finally, I was lucky enough. I was talking to Kirk to here one day, and he went, how come you're buying so many of those? Because I, I wear them out. There's no possible way you're wearing those out. He, I, I brought one in the next time. He said, how come you haven't sharpened this? I went, excuse me? <laughs> he pulled out the diamond hone and said, go try that. So I'm telling you my embarrassing story so you don't have to do that. OK, now you know. Super easy, and you have access to Kirk. You have access to me. It's fine. We'll, we'll make it work. I'm going to round this out a little bit because I want it to look like we did it on purpose and because I'm doing it a little bit differently than I typically do, and that's okay. We're just going to tuck this in, push in, rotate around, and you'll see that I'm moving back and forth. You'll see that I'm going to catch things on fire. I was in the classroom about three months ago teaching a, a 201 class. They wanted to see how to do captive rings. It was during lunchtime. I caught my pile of wood on fire for the first time. I was like, yeah, and the people were like, do you need to worry about that? No, never. I had a fire in the classroom. I went, maybe we need to start worrying about this. So the burning is normal? Yes, because of how fast I'm going. <sighs> Manufacturer recommendations is to do this at about 400 RPMs. We're at 4,000. So um, they take so long at 400 RPMs. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. And did you see how much I, moved? I swayed to the right and left? We have a captive ring, folks. That was really hard, huh? OK, we're just going to clean this up. We're going to leave this a little bit thicker on the end, which is fine. We're going to come around here. Clean out from under there so it looks like we did it on purpose. Looks like it just magically appeared one day. Roll that over. Sorry, you're going to get a little bit of wood. My favorite thing about this, and it's much to my mother's dismay, I'm the daughter of a general contractor. That's not what she's dismayed about. She really likes my dad most of the time. My father and uncle, who's actually at Barrett Jackson right now with the boys, when I lived down here in Phoenix, they'd stand on the back patio and see if they could hit the fence with the, 
watermelon seeds. I, that was one of the best lessons I've ever learned. I can outspit anybody in this room. I'm like Gaston, I'm especially good at expectorating. So we're gonna just roll over and part this off. We'll have a very nice little captive ring top. Do we all know how to do captive rings now? You've, se you've seen it once, you can do it, right? Right, right, right? That's what doctors say, see it, see it, something, do it, right? Yeah, it works, read it, see it, do it. That's what we do as wood turners. Watch it once, now, now you have all the information. That's for you. It went back to me. I'm not reaching for that. We'll send somebody. Somebody snag with your cane. Okay. No, no clapping yet. We're not done yet. Does it spin? Should we see if it spins? Do we think it's going to spin? I love that. Yeah, it's got to be quarter. This is a quarter inch captive ring tool. I own two. I own a quarter inch and I own the on the 3 8 I'm going to show you the 3 8 after I turn this into a top. And I'll do this without talking. So it'll be done in 30 seconds. OK, 45, because it's not my machine. So this is a one and a, qu uh, pff, one and a quarter. This is a quarter inch captive ring tool. Benjamin Best, they will have them in stock. They're so fun, aren't they? If I screw up, it's your fault. I'm not putting a captive ring on this one. That's not a sellable one, so I, I failed. <laughs> but it spins! Okay, <laughs> now what you all came here for. We're going to learn how to turn a baby rattle. I assume that everybody here knows somebody that's had a baby or will have a baby eventually and sometime in their life. I'm not having a baby. But you know somebody that has or will. <laughs> <sighs> I always make sure that my chuck is clean. Clean it out. And this is the... Tell me what name this chuck is. SC3. This is the SC3 chuck. And is this one that you, you clamp down to make sure you're in? <laughs> this is why I have my helper sit in the front row. I do like to have the tail stock up for this, just for a little bit added support. <coughs> Pardon me. And this is, I'll show you all the tools that we need for this. Ta-da! Okay, we will be using our roughing gouge. We're going to use a captive ring tool. This is a 3 8 captive ring tool. This is the size I like for baby rattles. It make, creates a really steady and strong captive ring. And if you can break the captive ring off with your hands, your captive ring had a crack in it. Also, the warning about captive ring baby rattles, dogs really like them. They are delicious. And we'll need a parting tool, a narrow parting tool. Da, 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 da. We're going to start with a, a, a blank. We're going to check out our blank, see what, we need to, see what, what there is to see. I'm going to want to avoid any wormholes. I don't typically turn baby rattles out of ambrosia because the wormholes get in the way and bad words are said. We'll see what we can do. We can always fill it with CA glue, which I was told there's some behind me. We're good. I'm not worried. I don't like to put CA glue on my rattles because often they go in mouths. There are worse. It's <laughs> you want to really start an argument. Tell, ask a wood turn, what's food safe? <laughs> my favorite thing to say. If you're not willing to put it in your mouth, as it is, not after it dries, after it's cured, don't use it. But to each their own. You do you. Do you. I, I'm picky. <laughs> Ask my husband. He'll agree. But we're going to get this in. Standard tool rest height for everything. We're not going to fiddle with stuff. This is the fun part. 
This can go really quick. And once you've done a couple of them, you can do them with your eyes closed. We're gonna turn up our lay speed. We're gonna get going. Layout for these. I usually have a set of eyebrow calipers, like for people that are eyebrow techs and they make really fancy eyebrows, which I know all the gentlemen in this room are really worried about. It's a thing. Ask your wives. I usually bring that. But do we all know what the golden ratio is? Okay, that two thirds, one third ish. And there's, there's definitely an ish there, the Fibonacci sequence. There's an ish. It's just a little bit off of two thirds, one thirds. That's how we're going to lay out our rattles. I am going to ask where a rattle is so I can hold it up. Oh, that's a good idea. I forgot. I'm lucky I got here. I was, I'm so scatterbrained. So two thirds, one third. This, you can lay it out, you can measure. I don't measure anything. I finally found the, the ratio I was looking for and I was talking to Kirk about it. He said, I'm so glad you finally figured it out. It was killing me. I said, you could have told me. He said, that requires measuring. Anyway, so if we look right here at our blanks, uh, blank size for these. Because we're gonna give these to children in theory, often grown-ups play with them more than kids do. That's a lie, my kids play with them all the time. And my kids range from almost 16 to uh, eight. Everybody loves these, they're fun. People like to take them and hold them and look and go, how'd, they, how, how'd you get that on there? Anyway, two thirds, one third. This is going to be two thirds of your work, right here. Uh, where do I need to be looking? Just tell, tell me which camera, straight ahead, straight ahead. So from this, this top of this bead to this top of this bead, two thirds. This to here, the handle is a third of this, uh, is a third of the total width. The total width. We can get really complicated with math here, or we can look at it and go, that looks about right. I am more of the that looks about right type because measuring's boring and it takes more time. So we're just gonna look at this. I always start with the handle and I lay it out. I look at my, my blank. I go, okay, where, where, where can I put my handle? Oh, there's some wormholes over here. Oh, we've got this over here. Since I've got some wormholes here, and I know I can avoid this eventually. We're going to lay it out like this, also because I might have put the tenon over here already. But usually I'll take my blank, look at it. Blanks are two and a quarter by two and a quarter by six and a half ish, ish, if you want to get technical. That's the only thing I'm worried about. I used to do two and a half by two and a half by seven, which is a weird thing. And I, two and a quarter by two and a quarter by six and a half gives you enough to have your tenon on there and get good, a good looking rattle. I was, I was trying to say ratio and rattle all at the same time and it came out as bleh. a good looking rattle with appropriate ratios. With children, it needs to be bigger on the end than the roll of a toilet paper tube or paper towel tube. You don't want it to be able to get, get in there. As long as you're hitting there, you're good. Because little kids like to put things in their mouths they have, if they can get it in but they can't get it out, that's a problem. You don't want them to be able to open their mouth wide enough to get it in. Also, dogs really like these. They're very tasty. So, and we asked, this is a, a high-end featured rattle because there's turquoise inlay. Also, uh, the blank is olive ash. Beautiful wood, beautiful wood. Uh, but turquoise inlay, Use your own judgment whether or not you're willing to give that to a, a kid. Often with these, they're for photos, and then they sit on a, a shelf. And I tell people, when you order an inlay rattle, this is what you need to be aware of. If it starts to fall out, throw it away. Or send it back to me and I'll fix it. I have yet to receive one back. But there's always that, that guarantee. Now we're good to go. We're going to turn our lathe on. We're going to get going at, at speed. And this is about 4,000 RPMs. Ooh, we did hit 4,000. Woohoo! 4,000 RPMs. We are between centers right now. Just for that added little security, we are going to start with the handle because I like to lay that out first, just so I can see about where we need to be. We're going to take our spindle gouge. We're going to anchor, find that bevel, rotate over, and make a cut. We're turning a big bead. And we're still, this is gonna be a hefty rattle if we don't take some stock off. But I always like to start with a bigger blank so I have room to work. I'm gonna take some material off because I don't need this all. I've been looking at it, I've looked at my blank, we're looking good. 
You can get away with a blank the size of two by two by six for rattles, but I always suggest that little extra quarter inch insurance policy. Okay, we're just removing some material. We're nice and smooth. Ooh, I love it when that happens. You're riding that bevel across with this tool. You can ride the bevel on this tool. Drop your handle, raise up, find that bevel, and just glide across. You'll see a burnish line following me, and you'll get that shiny little mark on the, the wood. We don't need this to be burnished yet, but it's kind of fun to show off. So we're going to stop it so we can see what we're doing, and we can see how we're looking. Did I get below those wormholes, or are they now in a different spot because they like to move? We're looking pretty good. Yeah, I think we can make this work. They're features. We're going to feature these to show that it's ambrosia maple, right? Because we want to show off that we've got this really pretty wood. Okay, spindle gouge. We're gonna roll this around. Okay, roll that bead over and we're gonna go into a cove. But first, but wait, there's more. I grew up watching infomercials. It was one of my favorite things. So we're gonna roll the up, the top part of our handle and go, yeah, that looks about right. We're just gonna eyeball it. And I'm at the point where I'm just like, I don't even think about it anymore. So having to explain how I lay this out makes my brain go <laughs> There's a little short there every once in a while. But it's fun. We're gonna roll a bead right here and go, yeah, do I like how wide that is? Do I want a little bit longer, shorter, steeper? I like to have a really wide bead on top and a narrow bead on bottom. We're gonna go into a cove. And with a cove, we're gonna start with our flute open. Are we looking down? Perfect, you're amazing. It's like he's done this before. Thank you, Chad. We'll start with our flute open and we're going to rotate around as we come down and slide over. So I lied, we're starting with the flute mostly closed. We're gonna slide down that bead like that and we're gonna open as we come around. I got a little mixed up, I apologize. But we are here and we saw my hands were doing the right thing, my mouth just wasn't. That happens sometimes. My husband says it happens more often than I care to admit, but he's not here and can't uh, wrap me up. We're appreciating that. He called me today, you're not gonna break any rings. Why would you say that? I'm like, why would you say that? I'm just calling to wish you luck. Thanks, sweetheart. I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. That's, his, that's a joke that he told me one day, and I thought he was so clever. And then he forced me to watch The Office, which is not my type of humor. And then I heard that joke on The Office, and I went, I thought you were super smart and so clever. No, he just steals other people's jokes. Stolen, stolen valor, stolen jokes. We're just cleaning up that rattle, and here's the best part. I don't mess with the handle now that I've got it laid out. Looks good, you see that I've got some lines in here. I'm not gonna worry about making this perfect, until I know my captive rings have survived. I'm gonna take this edge off over here, just so I can lay out where my top's gonna be. And at home, my cup center has a little point in it. I always give myself leeway with that. This one, I should have put the point in. It's okay, we're fine. Nobody's gonna tell, right? Okay, we're good. Okay, I'm looking around going, okay, where do I want this to be? Someday I'm gonna to learn to keep my mouth shut. Okay, we've got this one, again, we've got the 3 8 captive ring tool that is new out of the box. It might be sharp. Do we want to risk it? Okay, no. because this takes so long. I know that sharpening is so boring and it takes forever. There we go. Okay, we should be good. Uh, whatever he handed me, a thousand. I carry a, th a thousand or three thousand in my pocket, usually. I wasn't taking it because I didn't want TSA to steal it. Go, oh, that's an expensive card. We're gonna take that home with us. <laughs> I appreciate what TSA does, but I, I prefer to keep my own stuff. Okay, we are going to check again. I've got these lovely wormholes right here where my first captive ring should be. I can fix that. We're just gonna bump it around just a touch more. We're gonna roll this, this B. And when you receive a captive ring tool, often the manufacturers include a little packet explaining how to make one. I, you, I read that backwards and forwards and upside down and they tell you you should be turning it about between 500 and 600 RPMs and you should make sure that your tool is sharp and you should go slow 
and you should rough out your captive, your, your bead first. You, you need to lay out your bead and you should have this much space between and gives you all the list of things to do. No, we don't need to do that. The reason I can get as many captive rings in such a small space as I can is because of this captive ring tool right here. If I'm gonna do all, go through the work of all that, why? I could do it with a, a skew chisel because I do know how to use one now. I still don't, but I can. We're going to take our captive ring tool. We are going to place it on our wood. We're going to raise up our hand and we're gonna apply some even pressure as we do this. We're gonna bounce up and down. This is the secret that nobody bothered to tell me. The up and down, up and down. I am just applying nice, even pressure. You see that we're gonna start a fire here pretty quick. We're gonna rotate the side one way. I might slow down just a little bit because that's a little much. I don't generally get, I don't generally get that much of a burn mark. That's impressive. Um, that means I need to really sharpen that tool a little bit more. I'm gonna clean that up with my spindle gouge, just using a nice scraping motion. Uh, truth be told, I use the Hamlet roughing, uh, spindle gouge, not spindle gouge, the Hamlet captive ring tool. They're same design, same everything. My captive ring tool at home does the same thing. Benjamin Vest works. The cool thing about these ones is they are right and left handed. I can turn the whole captive ring with one tool. At home, I have four captive ring tools lined up next to my, my lathe. I turn one ring, switch tools, turn the other ring, switch tools, switch, because this gets warm and that, that heat starts to melt down the, the, the bar and it gets really warm. And I like my fingers not on fire. So up and down, up and down will give us that nice, really round ring. And this lathe spins faster than my lathe at home. So we're gonna turn down that, just a, just a touch. Also, are we hiding sandpaper close by? Yep. Oh, it's Abernet, Woohoo! I win. We should always be excited to find Abernet. Um, this is what I use. 90% of the time. You can buy it in big long sheets. There's a link in my bio if you want to buy some. I also believe that you sell it here. You can also get it here. Pick your favorite. <laughs> Obviously you get it here because it's here today. We're just gonna clean that up just a touch. Okay, really fancy. That was really hard, huh? It is still attached. That's okay. We're gonna leave, we're gonna let it just stay there for a few minutes. We're gonna go. Whoo. We're gonna sharpen this again because apparently <laughs> it doesn't like me. And turning the lace speed down will really make a big difference. Some difference. We're good to go. I sharpen as I turn. Super super quick. Super easy. Up down up down. This motion right here. The up down up down will give you round rings. Nobody told me this. It is not in any literature that you will find. <sighs> Which would have saved me so much sanding over the years. The up down, the bouncing motion makes all the difference in the world. Do we see how exaggerated that is? It truly takes that much. We're gonna slide around just like that. That up down will really round out that ring and it will do it all the way around so we don't have to sand the inside of our rings and fiddle with that. When I started turning, I'd, I'd hot glue sandpaper to the, my spindle and I'd make sure those were perfect. We don't have to do that anymore if we do the bouncing motion. It's kind of like a secret that I tell everybody because I don't want anybody to have to suffer through the years of sanding that I did. We're just gonna do it again. Up, down, up, down, just like that. This can get boring, not really, not really, I love it. We're gonna flip around, flip the tool around again. <laughs> it does not, it's so super, super easy. Um, I can do rattles in about seven minutes, start to finish, sanded everything. So they're, they're super quick, they're, they make excellent baby gifts and they're fun and people love them. I do, um, some called fidgets. I make really little ones like this. And people love them. They carry them in their pockets, like fidget toys, like fidget spinners and whatnot. Okay, I might be getting a little cocky because I'm gonna get rid of some material right here. I'm gonna clean up this, this side of this ring. Woo, just tickle the edges right here. Do we see how close these are? I might have uh, <clears throat> shot myself in the foot here. 
and put them a little too close to each other. That's okay. I usually space them out just a touch more, but this tool's just ground just slightly different than the one I have at home. It's just as well, it works just as well. But I usually use the little hook right here to lay out my rings. This one's a little thinner on top than I'm used to, so I did, that's where I usually space it. And it's usually about a quarter of an inch. And that one's a little bit thinner. That's more like an eighth. So we'll see if I can pull this off. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to start with this top ring right here. We're going to clean it up just a touch. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And we're going to sing while we do it because there should always be music on in your shop or whatever brings you peace. I usually am singing at the top of my lungs, which my neighbors really appreciate, let me tell you. I push that around. And oh no, I've got a black mark. No. Magic eraser. You haven't ruined anything until it's all the way gone, right? There's always a fix and there's not mistakes. There's design change opportunities. <laughs> Features. Ooh, there's a new feature. This piece of Abernet shot. <laughs> also, I can tell you're a pen turner with the grits that you have in here. With the grits you have in here. Guilty, guilty. I'm looking for like 120. Exactly. <laughs> Your 180 is non-existent. This is 800, 800. 80. This is 800. I'm really going to. This is really aggressive, but it's what I could find, and that's okay. We work with what we have. See? Magic eraser. Oh, They're great fun. And sanding on these, do not take a whole lot of time doing this because you're going to get done and you're going to go, oh, I should have done this instead. I usually sand through 400. I usually start about 120. 180, whatever it takes, and we're good. Okay, we're sanded, we're looking good. It's gonna be beautiful. In fact, I probably should have stopped to make sure I didn't hit any of those uh, ambrosia beetle marks. I might have avoided them enough. Okay, let's see. And this is the other thing. Stop the lathe to look at what you're doing. I know that's really hard and I, I'm really bad at it sometimes. Stop the lathe, look to see what you're doing, see if you've got your layout right. See if there's anything you need to change yet. It's looking good. I think we can pull it off. We're going to cross our fingers, hold our breath. Okay, maybe don't hold our breath because I don't want anybody passing out. But we're looking good. We're, almost, we're actually almost done, which is pretty cool. And if I can remember how to start this, we're, we're going to be even better. Okay. Does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, kudos? Excellent stories that I've missed since I've been out of town for a while. Who all is going to the symposium this year? Anybody? Yay! Anyone else? And tell me your name. Michael. Michael. Michael's going to go to the symposium. He'll see me there. Hopefully is the plan. Anybody going to SWAT? Chad's going. Amy's going. Maybe. We'll see. I'm, we're on the list. We'll see if that happens. Um, anything else happening this, this direction any, anytime soon? Okay. You've seen me, I'm moving back and forth, back and forth. Watch my feet. You'll see me shifting from my left foot to my right foot as I'm coming around these corners, trying to part these off. We're gonna take light cuts. Man, this is burning a lot. I, it, it's too fast? Hmm. You might be right. I, I would hate to admit that to anybody. If we didn't hear what Chad just said, he said, you're only 10 times over the recommended speed. I wonder why it's burning. I can't figure it out for the life of me. I've been trying to figure it out for about 10 years now. Yeah, there, it, it, could, it could be anything. It could be anything. Oh, I'm ebon. Ooh, yes, that's a, that's a good reason. And the inside of my rings have been ebonized for your safety. It really smooths that out. It's like cauterizing a wound. Okay, there is danger of me bending over because I've got long hair, so <laughs> I don't want to get that caught. I've seen somebody do that before. <laughs> Let's not play that game. You'll see that I'm bouncing as I'm going around. I'm just trying to get that ring cleaned up. And doo -doo 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 -doo. the really cool thing about Abernet is you can take it and mold it to fit where you want it to, to clean up. 
And I love this, love this, love this. It's, I buy it by the roll. Do you sell it by the roll? Okay, I buy it by the roll. I keep rolls right here. The only downside is I have to keep scissors by my lathe, which my children tend to wander off with. Like, where's my lathe scissors? Well, I was using them. No, these are moms. Go find the 80 other pair of scissors we keep at the house. You, it's because mine are the best. They're the sharpest because what do I cut with them? Sharpening, I sharpen them every time. Guys, I have not taken this long to cut a captive ring in probably three years. Please don't tell anybody. Oh, there's people watching. <laughs> Dang it. Oops. That's okay. If you're wearing a mask, that's really a hard thing to blow away. But dust collection's really a good thing. It helps with smoke, too. And you'll see that I hit the back side of the tool with this. Our magic eraser is right here. We're going to just fix that really quick. And again, this is a demo rattle. Nobody's going to hold me to it, right? Nobody's going to yell and scream, you didn't do it perfectly. It's a demo. OK, they should work just as well in a demo as they should anywhere else. Um, this is a different tool steel than the one I'm used to at home, so that's probably part of the issue, too. I'm going to make up every reason I can possibly think of for this to not be my fault. It is my fault, I admit it. Those are words my husband's never heard. <laughs> I should give him a link. Can you hear me, Grandma? I get my quick wit, quick wit from her. She, she puts up with me. Okay, we're bouncing as we're going. Pulling it around. And you'll see that I'm cutting into this the other ring because I was a little too close. That's okay. We can fix it. It's okay, we're not gonna stress out. And we're gonna show these really pretty ones that I finished at home. <laughs> we're not gonna show everybody this one. You know what, this works just as well as the other ones and I can, sh I can show you what I did wrong. And that's okay to so point out where our flaws are in our, our work. Sometimes we need that. It's okay that things aren't perfect. My sister would say, it's like the Navajo saying that there has to be a flaw in everything. I am really good at adding the flaw. Yes, sir. Question, comments, concerns? You can make these out of resin or segmented wood? I have never done segmented, but I have done resin. I have done hybrid blanks. I am not patient enough to make a resin blank. If somebody would like to send the wing one, I'd be happy to make you a rattle. I do make them out of skateboards, and those are really, really fun. I've got a whole, oh my gosh. When I get home, I ran away for the weekend, because sometimes mom has to run away from home. I ran away for the weekend. When I get home, I've got eight skateboard rattles to make, which that never happens. That never happens. They always come in waves. It's never just one or two. It's always a whole bunch all at once. I'm like, who told? Who told? They're lots of fun. But we'll see that captive rings really don't take this long. I promise they don't take this long, everybody. This is because I'm trying to talk and schmooze all at the same time. We're going to bounce back. Pardon? The nice ones take less time. The ones that I'm ruining on purpose so you can see what not to do, those take longer because I have to really think about how to mess them up. If I'm just doing it all at once, it doesn't take that long. And you'll see that I'm fiddling. You'll notice that I'm fiddling a little bit. That's why. I'm trying to fill the time I have. Everybody's favorite part of a demo is sanding. Did you not know that? Are you going to come demo for us? Okay. Talk to me. You can do it. I am actually the president of the club that meets in my area, which is hilarious. Um, we meet at Craft Supplies because we're allowed to meet in the classroom, which is awesome. And we've got some of the best turners in the world in our club. We have really lucked out. We've got lots and lots and lots of very talented club members. And I'm always after all of them to come help turn. I have two gentlemen from my club right here. We've got Mark Robinson and... I was going to say, Gail. I can never remember your last name. That's right. And they are brother, brothers-in-law. <clears throat> and they're, they're in my club. They were on my flight yesterday. They're like, what are you doing? Mark said, where are you going? And I'm like, same place you are. <laughs> and they're, they're good sports. They came to support me and heckle. Heckle a little bit more. Uh, to help me fill the time, Mark. <laughs> they're excellent. And th they show up. They're helpful. I, I love these guys over here. And like I said, I feel that way about most turners because most everybody's pretty friendly. Most. There's a few out there that 
We're, we're going we're gonna to fix. We're going to get... I'm not naming any names. I love everybody. Everybody equally. They just haven't figured out that they're supposed to be helpful yet. We're working on them. I can wear anybody down. <laughs> Guys, this is getting to the point of embarrassing. And it's going to be my husband's fault when this one breaks. We can all agree on that. So we'll know, just so you know, if you ever see one of my rattles, and it has two captive rings, it shouldn't have left my house. They don't generally. I don't sell seconds very often. Even the seconds that I do sell, and you'll see that I'm reaching in with the edge of this tool. I'm lifting up as I'm going so I can make that cut. And I see a little bit too much burn. I'm going to take this very fancy magic eraser. I'm just killing time. Does anybody have questions? Anybody online? Anybody want to make fun of me? All of them. Free is best. Free is best. And the best part about wood, it grows on trees. It's available almost everywhere. Um, and free works best. If you want to learn how to turn captive rings, practice on free wood, especially if you can get free, especially if you can get free maple. Yes, I took a cherry tree that came down next to my house. And it came down at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I had a rattle by 2.20. And that rattle has cracked and warped, but the rings held true. And I, it's one that I keep in my, it's one of the three, rattle, three rattles that I've kept for myself. I tried to say three and it didn't work. <laughs> Mark just said, you only got three out of the whole tree? Do you want to come do this? Are you sure? I think you could. You've seen me do it enough. I think you could do it. No, um, but really wet wood, green wood, will warp and it'll look really cool depending on where it was in the tree. But that's just because it's fun. I prefer dry. Yes, sir? What about the roll? Is that all together? Yes and no is the answer. I typically demonstrate on maple burl, but I'm very picky because I don't like to have voids in my rings. You can, do, you can turn anything. You can turn a ring in anything. Yes. Oh, I apologize. Can you turn rattles out of burls, captive rings out of burls? Yes, you can. Make sure that it's stable. It doesn't have to be stabilized, but make sure it's a solid burl because uh, they can get punky, they can get gross, and they tend to break. And I just, believe it or not, and I should have said this because I was talking else, I just did this on purpose. I caught the edge right here in this last ring, and you'll see it. I'll turn around so we can see my shame. Okay, apparently I didn't catch it enough. Dang it. I lied. I'm sorry. If you, if you catch the edge and put a line in it, we have this very handy dandy piece of sandpaper right here. And before we part everything down, we're just going to take that and rub it down. This is where we're going to stop and look at our piece of wood and go, okay, what do I need to fix? I am not going to take the time to sand all this because that is very boring. And I've used, spent too much time. But I am going to show you how to turn this into looking like a nice rattle. And if somebody's bored, they can take it home. We'll figure it out. Okay. Now, if you're really, really particular about your captive rings, you did not learn from me. Because this is supposed to be fun. We are going to practice. Our captive rings are all free now, and they spin. But it's, they don't spin a lot because there's not a lot of room beneath them. We're going to turn our lathe back on by hitting that button. And then the other one. Magic! I'm going to get there so soon. I'm actually really liking this lathe. It's a good... How much is this lathe? Do we know? That's, that's actually a really good price. And do they sell extensions for them? So you get a longer bed. <laughs> now what you need to know is I own three lathes. And what you also need to know is I have a very tiny shop. We enclosed our tiny little patio. I do not have room for anything else. I'm really looking for a long bed lathe right now, though. So we are going to sneak in and create this really lovely cove. And you hear that little grind? We're just going to push these out of our way. Lots of people will take them and tape them to the side. That's just a whole other step that we don't need to deal with. We're going to sneak between them with our really nice swept back wings and sneak in and just clean up this spindle right here. And as we clean up some more, we'll see that we can push them out of our way a little bit better. We're going to bring this around. So we're going to smooth this out just a touch. And now they flow a lot better. 
They, they spin better, they look better, and they sound so cool. Listen. Should I get closer? They rattle. It makes a rattle sound. It's amazing. <laughs> Woo! Success! I'm done. We can go home now. It's not done. We've got to finish the top, but we're, we're, we're getting there. So we're going to roll a bead into the cove, clean it up, follow that bevel all the way around, sneak in there. Guys, this is the most wood I've gotten in my mouth in years. I am so sorry. That came out wrong. Anyway, shavings, shaving. That, uh, that's gonna, I'm just going to make it worse. I'm just going to make it worse. Just, yeah, turn it off. Emily's done. PG show, PG show today. Okay, cleaned up. Now, I don't like how big that top is. It, it looks top heavy, which we're not after. We want it to look like we did this on purpose. Like we had, we had some forethought here. But first, this is a little too pointy and it's not quite what I'm going for. So now's where I'm gonna fiddle. I'm gonna just clean this up a little bit, roll that ring edge over, roll around here. And this is where you get to have fun. I'm gonna come up here, dip down, roll around, bead into a cove. Gonna clean this up just a touch. And this is where we're gonna decide what we're really after. Do I want this to be a big uh, top end heavy rattle? Do I want it to be even? What proportions are we at? You figure out what you like best, truthfully. Mine, I like to be a little bit more even, a little bit round. It's really what you're going for. Some people like really sharp lines. I'm not one of those people. I'm just gonna rotate over. Sorry, Chad. So, we're to the point, we can actually remove our tailstock now, but I'm just gonna continue whittling down because I like to have that up as my insurance policy. Between centers, super easy, super safe. Once we're not between centers, we're just holding a chuck. We're still safe, but the likelihood of disaster is more. And I like that I still have the support running all the way through the wood at this point as I'm finishing up the, my, the top of my rattle. I'm gonna roll this over, up, down, and around, remove material. And at home, once I can feel that my, my tool's a little dull, I'll switch tools, because I hate to sharpen. I sharpen all my tools before I get going, and then I stop, and I sharpen all my tools again. But I have four spindle gouges sitting next to my lathe. When I'm doing a run, I just go. And then I'll stop every few minutes and sharpen again. Great fun, I love that. You do you. But it is safer to sharpen more often. It's worth the little bit of tool steel you're gonna use to sharpen, 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 than it is to cut with a dull tool. I just wanted to throw that out there while you're all sitting here and my captive, captive ring audience. My, my husband is really into dad jokes. It's so, it's so bad. It's so bad. Okay. I'm done. I've got all the dad jokes running through my head. head. Do you know when a, dad jo a joke becomes a dad joke? Parent. When it becomes a parent. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Ta-da! Now we're almost done. Okay. What do we need to do? Sand. Yeah. Do I have to? No. No. I'm kidding. I am going to sand just a touch. But I don't like having a little nipple on the end because it looks really weird. Not aesthetically pleasing for a baby rattle. Maybe practical, but not aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Just going to bring that around. I'm going to use the back edge of my tool to clean this up. Right across that. I'm take a little bit of sandpaper. You see all these little bumps and ridges that we have because I wasn't making the perfect cut. I could have done this without it, but th this I show on purpose. We take a piece of sandpaper. Making clean cuts is more efficient it's okay. But if we're not doing that, it is okay to use sandpaper. We're going to bust out our 80 grit gouge. That's okay. But if you make those nice perfect cuts all at once, great. More power to you. I can do it, but apparently this demo was not the one that I wanted to show off in. Maybe next time. I'm just going to touch that a little bit. Does anybody have any questions, concerns, things I didn't cover that we're worried about? Yeah, we're good. Um, generally, we slow down for sanding. I don't slow down for anything if I don't have to. Ask the police officer. 
you can use anything, often for a denser wood. I will warn them that you should have a, a larger, older baby for them. Like I did one out of Coco Bolo. I did one out of ebony. I made a rattle out of ebony because I'm a sucker. One of my very good friends had a brand new baby and they didn't want a, they didn't want a, a, a girly rattle. They were very anti anything girly. Um, I've ruined your bearing in this, by the way. It's really hot. <laughs> However, I was doing a club demo. I gave myself a second to burn on one of them because the bearing had gone out. Anyway, um, yes, you can. The heavier the wood. I figure a heavier, <laughs> the heavier wood, they hit yourself. They it. won't do it again. <laughs> That's true, but you never know. I make rattles. They're all about the same size. For brand new babies, or between four and six months is when I start with like a maple rattle. Not a hard maple rattle, a soft maple rattle, a lighter wood. Um, once they're about seven months old, you can move into harder woods. And I know that's getting really technical. You don't have to get that technical. Give, them a, uh, give the parents the rattle, say, if they hit themselves in the head, it's your fault because you weren't watching. Yeah, new parents love, why my baby? No, it's pay attention to what your kid's doing. Is, yeah. I was never that way. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good question. Whatever you're comfortable with. I have done these out of um, resin. I've done them out of hybrid blanks. I've done them out of skateboards. What's the weirdest rattle I've done? Not as... Not any more than I do about this, but sanding resin sucks for rattles because I go through all the grits on micro mesh. All of them. What's my least favorite thing in the world to do? I would rather make a clean cut than have to sand. I'm, yeah, I'm a spaz. Yep, you use uh, Type Bond 3 because it's waterproof and drool is mostly water. I sent one to my sister-in-law, it was beautiful blue, and my husband had actually finished it, done all the finishing stuff. He would rubbed it down with, not what I typically use, the baby had a blue mouth. <laughs> she called freaking out, first baby, what did you give him? I said, there are less parts per million in the ink that they use, the, the dye that they use in skateboards, than there is in food coloring, because I looked it up. I did so much research when I started doing this. Oh, really? I said, yeah, wash his face. She didn't like me very much. Weird. I can't figure out why. So, now we've done all this hard work. It's looking great. There's one spot I want to sand a little bit better because we've got that really nice wormhole right here. And if I was at home, because I'm running out of time. What time are we at? Have I hit my 90 minutes? Aha! I'm so good. I know how to <laughs> do that. Anyway, I'm, I'm teasing. Please know that. So, while we're here on the, the lathe, we sand it out. I generally sand up to about 400. Sometimes I do six, depends on if I like the baby or not. I'm kidding. I like all the babies. I have only ever once had one break, and it's because their dog got it. I was like, are you serious? Um, I don't, I do super fancy ones sometimes. I do, my favorite are the ones that are just the straight grain, straight up. Rattle that they'll keep forever. I have several families that, when they're having babies, I get a phone call. And my favorite are to do like the heirloom pieces, the ones that this came from grandpa's tree or something along those lines. Because that means they take good care of them and all the things. But I really like doing the ones that, I'm working on one this next week. It's a rainbow baby. Husband's a skateboarder. Grandma and grandpa stole a skateboard, his first skateboard that was still at their house, sent it to me, and there'll be a rattle for their announcement when the baby arrives because they have not told anybody she's expecting. So, but I'm very excited for them. We're just gonna part this off. Just straight in. I use a narrow parting tool at home. Reach around so I, this one I don't wanna throw on the floor. I'm kinda spit weird that way. Tops, I don't mind. Rattles, I do mind. At home, I have a drill press that has a soft sanding pad right there. I will take my very burnt end, I'm going to confess, 
barbecue, and I burnt ends. Ha, 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 ha. Bad, bad, bad joke. I'll take my drill press at home. I'll sand through the grits on that end. You can reverse chuck it if you're really bored and you have that much time on your hands. I have never found myself with that much time on my hands. So drill press, sand the bottom, you're good to go. And we really truthfully can do these in less than 10 minutes. If you're starting your first one, probably plan on half an hour. But back and forth, back and forth, up and down, up and down. Yes, ma'am. Most important thing when I make a rattle is to keep in mind the proportions so it looks right and make sure that we're wide enough on the ends that the baby can't get it all the way in their mouth. And that's about the right proportion. It's a touch larger than it needs to be, but that's just that added safety feature that we're going for. Are there any other questions today? Questions, comments? Yes, sir. That's because I didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> finishing. The question is finishing. Anything that you're willing to put in your mouth, you can put on your rattle. However, I would not use olive oil, avocado oil, because they can go rancid. People like coconut oil also can go rancid. I use a mineral oil. Some people shy away from that because, oh, it's a petroleum product. Whatever they're comfortable with. Mahoney's works really well. It, uh, you do not run the risk of uh, allergies with Mahoney's because the protein that causes the allergies with walnut oil is removed when it's processed. I am deathly allergic to walnuts. I use Mahoney's all the time. I use Scratch Free. It has a little bit of uh, grit in it, so it kind of shines it up a little bit more. And I really, really, really like um, Walrus Oil, their cutting board solution, and whatever else Chad suggests. So do you have something that I, I won't use Mylans. Mylans is the one that I, I won't use because I don't know what goes in it. But there's some really good stuff. You can make your own um, beeswax. Odie's has to cure. Yeah, Odie's is good as well. It is. I, I'm not afraid of Odie's. Um, Odie's works. I used to use Odie's a lot, and then I saw how much it was, and I stopped using Odie's a lot. Um, <laughs> that's the only reason. I am a broke mom. I've got six kids. I never have any money. So if I can make it myself, I used to have bees, so I did a beeswax mineral oil solution for a long time. Whatever you use, I really like uh, scratch-free. I really like the walrus oil. If I'm willing to put it in my mouth, as it is, I'm going to wash my teeth with it. I'm willing, to use, I'm willing to put it on a baby rattle. I have some people that request no finish, and I have some people that request a CA finish. Those people get charged more. <laughs> they shine, though. Yeah, but can't they use one of these I have never. I am not that patient. Well, the only reason I say it is because they say it's food safe and everything else. Everything is food safe once it's cured according to them, they, them, them, those people. <laughs> I'm not getting into that. I pr what I use personally is uh, Scratch Free and uh, Walrus Oil. Walrus Oil is a great company. They're very, very nice. And they are sponsoring my giveaway when I hit 20,000 followers. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, go follow me on Instagram so I can hit 20,000 so I can give people stuff. I got lots of stuff. Oh, I am covered in sawdust. I'm She Turns Wood. I'm on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and Facebook. And just look up She Turns Wood, you'll find me. Uh, but I appreciate everybody being here today. If there's any questions, feel, please feel free to email. They did a great job. And I'll pass this around. And you will see that you need to sand the ends. But they're lots of fun. If you do make one of these, send me a picture. I'd love to see it. I, and I'll share it. I love it when people send me pictures of what they've made. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you for Turner's Warehouse for letting me come down.